Hey there you guys, it's your girl Kristen here. I'm a licensed esthetician, an educator, mentor, a YouTuber, and a mom. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode, and if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're an esthetician, beauty entrepreneur, that is all welcome here. I've been sharing with you my real and raw journey as an esthetician, going on five years with my license. Started off working at a spa, then graduated to being a solo esthetician. Now owning a business, I have a couple employees working with me, and it's just been a wild journey since. I plan to continue to keep sharing with you everything from skincare, facials, to entrepreneurship. That is all covered here on this channel. I know lately I've been doing a bunch of skincare reviews and facials and all that, but I love just touching base with you guys, just connecting with you on a real level, especially those of you who are newer estheticians. Maybe those of you who are still in beauty school right now or had just finished, graduated, maybe you're waiting to take your exam. This video is for you guys. I wanted to make tips for new estheticians or people who are just getting started in the in the industry and just sharing with you some things that I wish I would have known, you know, kind of starting out and just, you know, me me being in a mentor for you in a sense to give you some some feedback that I feel like is important to know going into this industry. Be sure to grab that pen and paper and continue watching. Actually, today is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to you if you're watching this. I hope you enjoyed some time with your loved ones, friends, family, your pets, whoever it is that you give thanks with. From the bottom of my heart, I'm so thankful for every single one of you guys who are watching this, who have subscribed to my channel. I hope that I get to meet more and more of you as time goes on. A few things before we jump into my tips that I wanted to share with you is that I am working on my new online skincare course. I think it's really important to mark your calendars for January 9th of 2023. For those of you who might not know what I'm talking about, I do offer an in-person skincare training, which I will always, always advocate is a better way to go. So if you're able to make it to California and train with me, I would love to have you. I'm taking applications right now for January and February of 2023. I know a lot of you guys are overseas or you're across the states and it's just not feasible for you to come and take this training with me so I am making an online version of it. More details to come but mark your calendars for January 9th and another thing I wanted to touch base on is to let you know that I have a new vlog channel. I know I've mentioned that before. I recently got surgery but I plan to share much more on that channel than just surgery. I plan to share with you beauty, clothing, home organization, vlogs, you know, just really more of the personal side of me. Those of you who really are true supporters of mine will go and subscribe and enjoy that content as well. It's in the works, but um, yeah, I just wanna continue to grow that page. Let's dive into these tips for new estheticians. I will say thank you so much um, to my teachers in beauty school, Miss Tina, Miss Joanne. You guys made an incredible impact on me at Advanced Beauty College. I wish you nothing but the best. And I also want to acknowledge my trainer at the spa that I used to work at, Carrie. We've kept in touch over social media. I just have to acknowledge those people because I feel like um, in your journey, you uh, you can't do it all on your own. I, and I even want to give a shout out to my SD Bessie, Ivy Janessa. If you don't follow her already, go ahead and give her a follow. But it's just really important in this industry to make connections with people. And I think going into esthetician school, I wish I would have spent more time networking. I wish I would have spent more time asking questions. When you go into this industry and you're brand new, you're just nervous, you, you don't know what it is that you're going to specialize in or where your path is going to lead you. But I will tell you, no matter what path it is that you go upon, it's always good to just have connections, to make those relationships. Because for example, my friend Ivy, who I've kept in touch with uh, since beauty school, she went the medical route. She works for a dermatologist, plastic surgeon office, and she's been able to share with me a, a variety of, of knowledge and information and tips and I'm just so thankful that I was able to kind of pick her brain and stay in tune with her and also for her to also get advice from me because she's not currently solo but she wants to go solo at some point and so I've been able to share with her things that I've been going through as a solo business owner and we've been able to just feed into each other and so I encourage you to make sure that you're making those connections you're not just clocking in and clocking out just trying to get your hours done like 
you truly, truly have a passion for this industry and you want to thrive, I promise you making those connections are going to be invaluable in the end. And also, you know, trying to find other mentors like myself here on YouTube. I know there's a handful of other people who offer really great content. I know Glam by Lili. She's been a really great page to follow and a few other YouTubers, but I don't know what Lili like stands out to me right now. She's uh, we've done a live together on Instagram before and I just feel like her content is really genuine as well and she shows services and you know so it's really important to just dive into this industry like really go subscribe to a bunch of pages speaking of continuing education that's another tip that I have for you is to continue to educate yourself especially if you are newer in this industry because and here's the thing I, I don't want to offend anybody or or step on anyone's toes but I just don't really understand why state board has decided to eliminate the practical from the exam and so now for those of you who maybe are in the industry you guys didn't know this but they're only requiring the written exam and that to me is kind of scary and and I'm sure there's some people who are happy about that because the practical really truly was the scariest part of the state <laughs> state board. But I felt like it was so necessary to teach you about sanitation, to teach you about how to do proper protocol and just having that pressure almost to weed out the people that weren't serious or that weren't ready. And so I encourage you guys, if you are about to take your exam or you're just graduating, to not be intimidated by that. I just think now you almost have a larger responsibility to continue to educate yourself to make sure that you are practicing at your best level at all times and to remember what you learned in school because you also went through COVID you know you guys went through school through COVID and gosh my heart goes to you because I I'm really glad I didn't have to go through that but I know a lot of you guys are dealing with kind of the ramifications of the pandemic and so it is going to be even more important to continue to educate yourself and I will be sure to try to be a resource for you like I mentioned earlier I'm doing that online course one day it's my dream to be able to host multiple people at once right now I'm really at capped at two people because I just feel so so you know sad that you guys didn't get that full experience that I was able to experience when I was in beauty school but at the same time you know don't be too discouraged because I feel like beauty school is really aimed to just help you get your license it's just supposed to kind of brush over the basics so even when I was in school I don't feel like my school taught me everything that I needed to know so don't feel like you need to know everything even if you were in the pandemic or weren't in the pandemic there's still always so much to learn and so it's just again driving that point in i hope you're getting it into your brain that you need to continue to educate yourself you know of all the skincare brand reviews i've been doing i think it's important to consider the the brands that you're working with because there's a handful that have been really helpful in educating even myself as a sole esthetician to how to perform treatments properly to teach me about skincare teach me about ingredients chemistry things like that and so it's important when you are considering which brands to work with that they are educating you properly on on how to use their their product so with that being said I, I want to encourage you guys also to be patient. It's really difficult, especially when you're passionate about this industry and you want to just start doing lashes and you want to start doing facials and you just want to know it all. I hate to burst your bubble. Um, even five years into this, I still don't know everything. I still don't have it all figured out and it is purely trial and error. And so there's a couple points I want to make with this one point is about being patient. Number one is I'm still really, really glad that I got a job after esthetician school. I worked at a high-end spa. I had a great trainer. I had great co-workers, thankfully. And yeah, I mean, obviously it wasn't ideal to get paid minimum wage and, you know, work like a slave and clean up and all that and do the, the groundwork. But I just feel like in order to appreciate and to build that work ethic in this industry, you have to work somewhere else. I know some of you are probably like, I never want to work for anyone and I can do it. And and I'm totally not um, raining on that parade. Like, I think it's awesome if you're motivated and, and inspired to do your own thing. And if that's part of your journey, then that's part of your journey. But my journey, I felt very comfortable working somewhere and getting that experience, making those initial mistakes, because I promise you, no matter how good you think you are, 
you will make mistakes. I definitely had people at the spa who complained, who said I did extractions too hard or they felt dry after. Thankfully, at the time, management has to handle. Um, I just feel like I wasn't ready to take that on, take that responsibility on. And I'm just thankful that I had that training to be able to kind of like just practice. And that's the, my other point is just practice, 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 practice makes perfect. Being f almost five years into my license, I still don't feel like I'm the best I'll ever be. I feel like it's just a continuous journey to becoming an even better esthetician. Just know that if you're brand new you're and you think you're good, like you're just gonna get better, especially if you're practicing. And I think with proper guidance, you'll be the best. Another point I wanted to make in regards to being patient, and I know again, this is kind of another probably like controversial topic, but as your mentor, I feel responsible to say this. I feel like if you don't have your license yet, you're, you're waiting on state board or you're in school still, I think it's best to not start your own thing at home, to go and open your own business. It's just ethically, it's not good to practice without a license and or liability insurance. Because guess what, it's not just um, risky. Um, you can get sued. You can get in trouble from state board. You can have all of your potential taken away if someone were to catch you. You're also representing a seasoned esthetician. And I can't tell you how many times I've had clients come in who literally were scared of getting a facial because they had gone to somebody who was not as experienced and they had a terrible experience. I just feel like it's usually done by somebody who's inexperienced or just jumps into their own thing too soon. And so just remember, you are representing all estheticians because consumers and clients lump us all into one category, sadly. Just know um, you're gonna make those mistakes and that's why I think it's just best to make those mistakes when you're licensed, when you have insurance, and, when, and hopefully if you're working for someone for at least a year. You know, agree with me or not, but I just feel like a lot of people would also agree with me. And I'm sure maybe if you don't even understand it now and you're like, oh, Kristen, you know, I just, I just want to get started. I need to make money now. And everyone has their reasons for it. But I promise you, when you are where I'm at, five years into this, when you've had all this experience and met so many people and heard stories, you will understand. Um, I can't say I've been perfect. I mean, I've never practiced without my license, but I did have my own little setup in my grandmother's home for a period of time, and I didn't have an establishment license. But looking back on it, I'm like, man, there's probably a handful of clients that I could have kept that I probably scared away because I didn't have like the nicest setup. I didn't put my best foot forward is what I'm trying to say with those clients. And so it's, it happens, but I just feel like it's just best to wait, to just be patient because it'll be there. Trust me, it's not going, this industry is not going anywhere. And I think you need to put your best foot forward if you are a newer esthetician. Okay, I gotta, I gotta change up the position here because my feet were going numb. So yeah, those, those are the tips I have for you like brand new estheticians. Now say you're somebody who is just getting their business started your license, you have all the things that you need, which if you are somebody who doesn't know what you need, be sure to check out my other resource, my Going Solo series. I walk through step by step what you need, what to do to open up a successful business and it be official and it be in compliance. That's also been a course that I launched earlier this year that's been doing really well and I've gotten great feedback about. But say you are, you're set up, you, you're, you're ready to go. Something that I wish I would have done is I wish I would have documented more. I wish I would have taken pictures of my client's skin and yeah I do have some like usually it's the people that have that really bad acne that I would take pictures of but I feel like even if I just would have taken pictures of all of my clients so that I could see their their changes in their skin because not everyone deals with acne or pigmentation sometimes people come in with pretty good skin but they get better skin because they come to me and so I wish I would have just documented more I would have taken more pictures so that I could have substantial amount of before and afters because that's always really good for marketing because I've had clients that have been coming to me for gosh some of them almost two years now and I really wish that I would have had a before picture of their skin so that I could show people like hey this is how your skin looks after two years of being like consistent with me they're always like talking about how great their skin is and stuff but it's just something about a picture or video that just speaks so much more to new people looking in and so I definitely 
definitely encourage you to document all your clients um, also to make sure you're documenting their treatments I recommend getting a scheduling system or some way to document uh, the treatments that you've done on their skin I started doing that about a year into um, my my practice and I wish I would have done that from the very beginning that way you know what you've done on that person's skin I know this has happened to me because my availability changed and I've had some clients that had to either continue to go to Kristen or or leave I've been able to actually convince some of them to stay and to be with Kristen because I told them hey I've documented your treatments if you go somewhere else they're not gonna have this history of your skin they're not gonna know what to do next and also I've had the issue where sometimes people are wanting to get services from different people from different estheticians and I actually tell them like I, I don't really recommend that only because I don't know what they're doing on your skin they don't know what I'm doing on your skin and it's actually been a really good selling point to clients to keep them in your practice and of course there's those exceptions like I do refer out sometimes to like a dermatologist someone who offers a service that I currently don't offer and I just tell my client like make sure you're telling me everything you're doing to your skin so that it doesn't comp uh, it doesn't create contraindications to our services. But most of the time I do explain to clients like it's best for you to stick with one esthetician and one derm one dermatologist. So yeah, be sure to do that if you're just getting started in your business. I feel like there's so much more that I want to say, but I just feel like this video is already getting longer and um, I promise you I will think of even more tips for you guys, but I just had to share that what was on my heart. I really feel passionate about teaching. I really feel passionate about helping you guys have a successful career and that's exactly why I made this channel. That is all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed those tips. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel like this video if you were encouraged by it if it was helpful and i will see you guys back here next week on monday for a new video and i love you happy thanksgiving and soon to be christmas and new year's let's make the rest of this year count okay so i'll see you guys in the next video bye